Today we are going to talk about the lymphoid system immunology where today's basic concepts and lecture is about that let's suppose a bacteria enters in a person's throat and that bacteria is multiplying there and damaging the tissue then how our immune system will respond to that challenge of the bacteria and while we will be studying how our immune system will respond to that challenge we will be talking, talking about the B cells and T cells and macrophages and other cells which are involved in lymphoid tissue and immune responses. Let's start the story from here. There is a beautiful man. Men are also beautiful at times but they are only smart. Okay. Let's suppose a bacteria comes here this is a bacteria right and this bacteria attaches with the mucosa and then it start multiplying they start multiplying and then this bacteria start releasing its toxins and start damaging the underlying tissue let's suppose I have enlarged this tissue this is wall of the pharynx this bacteria enters into wall of the pharynx and start damaging the local tissue is that right when it will start damaging the local tissue naturally body will try to defend itself against this invading damaging microbe right whenever tissue is damaged we say there is inflammatory response whenever vascular tissue is injured there is inflammatory response during that inflammatory response blood vessels dilate blood vessels which are going to this area especially arterioles they will dilate so blood flow to, to this area will be more or less there will be more so that increased blood flow should bring more neutrophils more macrophages more lymphocytes more antibodies and more other components of the blood which can fight with the microbe so what really happens that as this bacteria enters into this tissue and start multiplying there and start damaging the tissue right tissue response towards this injury is by inflammatory process during infl inflammation arterioles dilate and blood flow to this tissue increases and microcirculation that is capillaries capillaries which are lined by which cells endothelial cells endothelial cells undergo modification what happens in endothelial cells what happens to endothelial cells that endothelial cells express special sticky molecules this express special adhesion molecule so that the white cells white blood cells which are coming into this tissue they should stick to these endothelial lining they should not simply move out so what really happens tissue is injured vasculature is changing there arterioles are dilating and in microcirculation and capillaries endothelial cell becomes sticky for the white blood cells so white blood cells start sticking to the endothelial cells and as you will know later when you will study inflammation in detail that white blood cells will come out from the vascular compartment into tissue for which purpose to fight with the bacteria which white blood cells come out first neutrophils or macrophages or lymphocytes who will tell me which are the white blood cells which type of white blood cells first of all come out during acute injury acute mean short term injury yes neutrophils. neutrophils that's good neutrophils come first of all into tissue why there must be a reason because they're most abundant and because they're most motile and because the substances which attract the neutrophils they are produced first of all why the neutrophil first of all come out of vascular system into tissue to fight with the organisms because they, they enter first of all and in big number why because the number in the blood is more than the monocytes more than the lymphocytes more than the sinophils more than the basophils neutrophils are the most abundant white blood cells in the blood this is one reason secondly neutrophils the most motile out of the all other white blood cells neutrophils the most motile number three the chemo attractive substances to bring the neutrophils out chemotactic agent to attract the neutrophils are produced most early 
that is why neutrophil will come out into tissue. So here the neutrophil which has come out to fight with the microbe and once neutrophils start fighting with the microbe they will call their friends and they will call their friends which are more hardy which are stronger which are those friends. Neutrophil will produce some chemical substances to attract a very special type of strong cells, hardy cells. What are those cells? They are macrophages, that's good. Actually, they are monocytes. Monocytes are present in the blood and when monocytes come out, they are called macrophages. So, suppose in this bacterial infection, when tissue is damaged, neutrophils come into tissue from the vascular compartment followed by the macrophages. Is that right? Now, let us see what really happens here. I will enlarge this area. Let us see what really happens here. I remove a piece of this tissue from here and put it there. Here was, let us suppose, vasculature, right? And here was a neutrophil out to fight. Always make neutrophil with multi-lobated nucleus. That's a sign of neutrophil. Whenever you make a cell, white blood cell, put multiple lobes in the nucleus, it is automatically understood all over the world you have drawn neutrophil. And when you draw the macrophage, make a cell with irregular boundaries but kidney-shaped nucleus. Actually, macrophage is a monocyte. You know, monocytes are one of the circulating white blood cells. When monocytes come out into tissue, they are named and called macrophages. Macro mean what? Macro mean big. Phage mean eating. These are big eaters, macrophage. Of course, then doctors must be comparing it with some small eaters. Macrophage is a big eater. But there should be something which eats a little. They should be called microphages. If there are macrophages, there must be microphages. Macrophages, everyone knows. Which are the microphages in the body? Of course, very good. Neutrophil the microphages as compared to the macrophages. Is that right? Anyway, they are out. And let's suppose this bacteria is a bacillus. Okay, we make it here. Bacillus. These are the bacteria. Now, this bacteria is a bacillus and these are bacterial, what are these? Bacterial antigens. These are bacterial antigens. Now, what will happen? Neutrophil and macrophage will engulf the bacteria. They will phagocytose the bacteria. Let's suppose this is a neutrophil, right? And this is a multi-lobated nucleus of the neutrophil. And it phagocytoses the bacteria, so bacteria is present within the neutrophil in its uh, phago phagosome. And these are bacterial antigens. One bacteria has one type of antigens or many types of antigens? Many. Type. many types. Every bacteria has many, many types of antigens. That is why we say microbes are antigenically mosaic. That is why against one type of bacteria, multiple types of antibodies can be produced. Why against one bacteria you can produce multiple type of antibodies? Because one bacteria carries multiple type of antigens. Am I clear to everyone? Right? So, but in my diagram, I am showing one antigen. Okay, for your peace of mind, I show multiple antigen. This is one antigen. The star is another antigen. This triangle is still another antigen and this is another antigen. These are multiple antigens I am showing on this bacteria and of course this bacteria is not happy. It has been captured, right? And not only it has been captured, this neutrophil will start emptying its lysosomal granules in this phagosome. What is coming there? Lysosomal product especially destructive enzymes, dangerous enzymes. Those enzymes will start digesting the 